Good morning, and welcome this morning to the Agunquit Baptist Church Online. This is the fourth Sunday in Advent, and I'm glad you can be here with us as we celebrate and anticipate the coming of Jesus Christ into the world. He who loves us and came into the world for us, that he might bring to us forgiveness and eternal life and reconciliation with God. Let's celebrate all of that as we celebrate him this morning in worship together. I hope you will uh, join us for our Christmas Eve service, which will be virtual, and will be going up onto our YouTube channel on Christmas Eve at about 7 o'clock. It will be a service of story and song, uh, as well as uh, silent night candlelight at the end. So have your candles ready if you'd like to join us for that. And that will be on our YouTube channel at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Our hymn this morning is number 178 in your hymnal, if you have one at home. O come, all ye faithful. The lyrics will appear on the screen. Let's sing God's praise together. We are continuing to light our Advent wreath virtually, and we are glad to have another special guest uh, this week to read our scripture reading. This week we light the candle of love, representing the love that Jesus has shown to us by coming into the world for us, to give himself for us and to us. May we, today and throughout the Christmas season and always reflect his love to everyone he brings into our lives. Amen. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, for whoever who believes shall not perish but have e eternal life.
now, would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, on this, the fourth Sunday in Advent, we thank you for your great love for us. Love that you showed to us when you sent Jesus, your Son, into the world. Father, help us to be conduits of that love, that we might show it to our neighbors and to our friends and to our family. Yes, during this time of Christmas, when it's so foremost in our mind, but also on December 26th and 27th and, and in 2021, Lord. Fill us with your love, we pray, and help us to take your love to all the people that you put in our lives. Father, pour out your love, we ask, on our world, a world that's in need, a world that's hurting because of the coronavirus. Father, bless those who are sick, we pray, with healing. Thank you for this vaccine that is now going out. We pray that not only would it be very effective, but that it could be quickly distributed so that many, many people might have it very, very soon. Lord, thank you for your love that you give through so many ways, including through material blessings like a vaccine. Lord, hear our prayer for those who are distributing the vaccine and for all medical personnel. Bless them and protect them as they care for those who are sick. And Lord, hear our prayer for those who are hurting financially in one way or another because of everything that's happened. Lord, you are the great provider. We ask that you would provide and assist and help them to make it through for a little while longer until this is finally over. Father, help us to be filled with your love so that we might be generous this Christmas time and beyond in 2021 to everyone in need. Lord, your love is great. Soften our hearts, Lord, and turn them toward you that in 2021 we might see the love of Christ more clearly, see his light shining ahead of us more brightly, that the path that he's laid before us might be illuminated more strongly so that we might walk it without stumbling, following him, being like him, and being a blessing like he is to everyone we know. In his holy name we ask this. Amen. If you would like to give a gift to the Agunquit Baptist Church, or if you're able to continue with your planned giving during this time, then that would be greatly appreciated. And you can send a check to the church's post office box, which is P.O. Box 874, Agunquit, Maine, 03907. You also can give through bill pay at your bank, and instructions on how to do that can be found on our website, agunquitbaptistchurch.org. During Advent, there are a number of causes that we support and offerings that we take up for them. And today and on Christmas Eve, we are asking you to give to our denomination's Retired Ministers and Missionary Offering. These are funds that go to give a love gift to retired ministers and missionaries at Christmas, and also that act as sort of an emergency fund for retired ministers and missionaries, many of whom have spent their entire lives in dedication and service to, the, to God and to the church to help them when they're in need. So we were asking you to prayerfully consider giving a gift to the retired ministers and missionaries offering. And if you'd like to do that, you can send a check to the post office box and put in the memo RMMO. Thank you for supporting our ministries.
During Advent, instead of a regular sermon, um, I have been presenting dramatic monologues. And today will be the fourth and final dramatic monologue that I will present. We have heard from King Herod, we've heard from uh, a shepherd, we've heard from Joseph, and today we are going to hear from one of the Magi. These monologues are based on scripture and on historical research, but they do, of course, uh, take some liberties and make some extrapolations, especially when it comes to characterization and to motivation. I hope that you are finding that they bring these characters alive for you during the Advent season. The scripture lesson today is Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. I'm reading from the New International Version. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judah, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judah, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of incense, and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to the country by another route. May God bless this reading of his holy word. My name is Caspar. I come from the great and mighty empire of Parthia, or as you might know it, Persia. Yes, the haughty Romans did not rule the entire world, whatever they might like to boast. We Parthians fought them to a standstill for many years and stopped their otherwise inexorable expansionism cold at our borders. I am one of the Magi, a prince of the realm and a scholar. I have always been fascinated by knowledge and filled with a desire to find the truth of things. I have spent much of my life studying many subjects. The greatest of those subjects has been my study of religion. We Parthians have always believed in a great God of goodness who was opposed by an adversary of evil. But I set aside those beliefs to conduct my study. I searched high and low near and far, to seek the truth of the supernatural world. I studied scrolls and conducted interviews with members of religions great and small, seeking the truth about the gods, seeking to answer one simple question. Who created man? In my research, I found a vast array of ideas about the gods, none of which satisfied me. For these gods were petty and foolish and were filled with betrayal and hatred and greed and lust and all of the things that mankind falls into so easily. 
And I thought to myself, are these the great gods that we must serve? They seem just like us. Perhaps worse. They did not seem like gods at all, but rather like the creations of the imaginations of men or of the adversary. And many of these gods relied on their followers for sustenance. In their rites and sacrifices, these gods found food, and without their followers, they would starve. And I thought, how can they be the creators of all that is if they cannot even sustain themselves? Indeed, the more I studied these gods, the more I became convinced that there must be another higher God, uh, the most high God. And it was then that I came across ancient texts that had been handed down to us from the time of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and Cyrus, king of Persia, that they had received from a wise man named Daniel. I read of a god named Yahweh, a god who was not like any of the others. A God who transcended this world and yet was its creator and sustainer. A God who, who simply spoke and all things came into being by his mighty command. I read of a God who was patient with his people. Though they were disloyal to him again and again. And I read of a God of righteousness and holiness in whom there was not even a hint of evil or wrong. And my heart rejoiced and I proclaimed, these people have found the great God of goodness, the most high God. These people were Israel, a nation my ancestors had conquered and who were now under the thumb of the mighty Romans. I sent to there and everywhere and gathered their writings until I had them all. And when I had read everything and seen all the wonders of the Most High God, I fell down on my knees and lifted my hands to him, begging that I too might be considered one of his people. Through my continued study, I discovered ancient prophecies of a coming king. I learned that the scholars of Israel thought this king would come to free them from the Romans. But I soon began to see that, that this king's mission would be much greater than that. This king was coming to take the rebellion of his people upon himself and pay its price. Their prophet Isaiah said, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. And then I discovered that this promise of peace for rebels was not for Israel alone. Again, their great prophet Isaiah said, I will make you a light to the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Amazing. Praise the Most High for his his great love and mercy. He will provide a sacrifice to pay for the rebellion of all people and to bring peace to all the earth. But, 
But when would this happen? I wanted to know. Again, I scoured their writings. And in the ancient book of the numbering of their people, after their escape from Egypt, I found my answer. The words of Balaam the prophet concerning the sign of the Messiah. Behold, I see him, but not yet. I behold him, but not now. A star shall rise up from Jacob, and a scepter shall come forth from Israel. I love the stars. I watch them every night, seeking knowledge of the heavens and of their influence on earth. And so I began to watch for the star sign of the king. For years I watched diligently I convinced some of the other magi to watch with me. And finally, about a year ago, it appeared. It appeared in the sky over Jerusalem. The star beckoned to me. And I knew the king was coming. So I prepared myself and set forth on a great journey to the land of Israel. Two of my colleagues accompanied me and we found him, the divine king, the Messiah. In Bethlehem, of course, How could I have missed that? It was right there in the writings of their prophet Micah. We found him. Lowly and in a manger. With nothing special about him to commend him to us. Just as the prophet Isaiah had said. And we knew. So my brothers and I brought forth our gifts And we bowed down to him and worshipped him and gave him the honor due a mighty king. And I rejoice and always will for as long as I live that the Most High God sent this child for his people. And that we too are included in the coming salvation. I rejoice that when I sought for him, he did not hide his face from me, but that when I sought for the Most High God with all my heart, he allowed me to find him and his Christ. Hallelujah. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and bring you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Agunquit Baptist Church Online. Have a healthy and blessed Christmas.